Man has a very unique capability. That is the capability to store information external to himself and to use that information for his advancement and well-being. And the computer, the entire information processing industry, is serving that very unique capability. And that, to me, is a tremendously exciting prospect. of the future, the cashless society, the paperless revolution. With the coming of the information age, one thing is certain. The business of doing business is changing. New technology is altering man's relationship to work. Robots now perform dangerous and routine tasks. Automated warehouses store and retrieve large blocks of merchandise. Even manufacturing is affected as computers design the simplest consumer products to the most complicated microprocessor chips. Soon a whole new industry will be upon us. The business of information is coming. Taking advantage of this potential, the airline industry was at the forefront of change. Reservations, scheduling, maintenance, even baggage handling has become subject to advancing automation. At Bell Laboratories, researchers have been working on an even more curious change. This is the Bell Lab flight information system. Please state your flight destination. San Francisco. On what day of the week are you planning to depart to San Francisco? Tuesday. At approximately what hour do you plan to depart? Nine. Coupled with the telephone, voice recognition and voice synthesis Nine. provide convenient, comfortable access to a world of information. A.M. From which airport are you planning to depart? Kennedy. At which airport are you planning to arrive? International. Flight number 59, leave 9 a.m., arrive 12.15 p.m. This flight makes no stop. The round trip coach fare is $388. News is a global product. Timely processing is essential. Stories can now be filed from remote locations, entered in computer memory, and edited on a word processor. Still in memory, the finished story is typeset and printed, all electronically. The story appears on paper only when it is delivered. No more inefficient paper edits. Hard copy becomes a bonus. Paper, an option for much more selective use. A word processing is a technology which was introduced to provide uh, more automatic assistance in the preparation of correspondence. The operator can move paragraphs around, delete paragraphs, make corrections, and do all the things that you could do with a typewriter, but without producing any paper whatsoever. What we have here is the text editing part of a complete office environment. The system itself is divided into four separate components. The controller, the keyboard, the, the display, so that and the printer. the individual in the office has at his or her disposal and at his or her beck and call all of the processes of the information is in the Under the desk is a small It can be edited and moved around and changed. The system automatically, because it is a document-oriented system, goes 
completely through the document, regardless of page breaks, regardless of document size. Wherever it finds the string characters, it will replace it automatically for us. One of the unique features of uh, a shared logic system is the ability for multiple users to work off the same system. There are diskette drives which individuals can work from. But I can, as an operator, also access someone else's information. This is very useful when we have and, uh, as a staff, situations where deadlines. We have three main word processing centers at Security Bank. Uh, our plans call for expanding word processing to the entire corporation. We join with capabilities to file, retrieve, print, draw, send, and receive information. There is a program which allows the entire letter to be passed through a dictionary as you would yourself by reading it. And then, it, should it find a word that it cannot find in the dictionary, it would flash the word on the screen, allowing the operator to correct it. Now that all the changes have been made, our line endings are ragged and need readjustment. Also, because I brought information in from a separate document, I need to have the system divide the document up into separate pages. This is an optical character reader. It's used to read typewritten sheets that are produced with a ball element typewriter, which is available in most offices. And it basically makes any typewriter in an office an input device to we the We try computer. to provide as many features that would help the individual user do to do his that, job uh, better. There is a very serious attempt for technology to reduce the labor which is expended in any office. I feel, for example, in our case, the electrostatic writing technique will be used in other the areas of the company. environment of what we call non-impact laser-based xerographic printers, which is utilized to print messages and communications from the electronic message system, which enables one to to just type a message and send it right away to anyone who's linked into this system around the country. Even if they're 3,000 miles away, I can get to them practically right away. Also send documents back to us at the same time. Telecommunications is the fabric, it is the glue which is bringing these technologies together. The entire Office of the Future development is based upon telecommunications that ability to interconnect machinery in such a way that we can move information in electronic image form and thereby reduce substantially our dependence upon paper and all of the inefficiencies associated with its use. The effect of the microelectronic revolution on business thus far has not really been very profound. Perhaps the biggest single new um, development has been the use of word processing in the office. But in the future, you are going to see massive changes in the way people have to operate if they wish to have an office job at all. Microelectronic technology undoubtedly increases job output and creativity. However, it will eliminate many jobs. Unfortunately, those with the fewest job skills, those at the bottom of the employment ladder, are often hurt most. What is needed is genuine social change, education, orientation, adaptation. New opportunities must be found for the new technologies. Computers and electronics can be used in two ways. They can replace and redo jobs which were done in the past, and they can start doing jobs which had never been done before. There's a real probability that we could develop an economy in which an increasing portion of the gross national product comes from the exchanges of information, and that could be a fundamentally wealth-creating process, doing a new thing a new way. Information is becoming our most valuable resource, a commodity to be bought, sold, traded, even invested in, a valuable tool for solving diverse problems. Paper files to magnetic bubbles. As storage mediums decrease in size, their capacity increases proportionally. Soon a wealth of information will be available on demand. 
A database is a large amount of information stored in a form that the computer can not only access, but can find what you're looking for through an index which you provide. It is, if you like, a massive computer encyclopedia, which gives uh, it access to information on a broad variety of subjects. You tell it what you want to know, it goes and gets it for you. Databases now exist for all types of users. Corporations, professionals, even small businesses and private individuals are gaining access. Combine word processing with data processing techniques, and the potential for manipulating information is endless. The small businessman now has a competitive edge. Microcomputers provide up-to-date information on inventory, sales, and payroll, any data needed on a day-to-day -day basis. Software programs like VisiCalc perform instant market analysis, projecting both profit and sales. In Canadian tire stores, point-of-sale terminals record all customer transactions and store the data in many computers. At night, information from hundreds of outlets is transmitted to a central computer, which, in turn, reorders stock. Goods are automatically retrieved from a computer-controlled warehouse. Someone walks into one of our stores looking for a product. The nature of the self-serve retail business, which, whether we acknowledge it or not, is the way all retailers are forced to operate these days, is that the product has to be on the shelf and clearly presented to the customer, clearly priced, so that they can make their selection and take it to the cashier. All of that information, as the customer goes through the cash register, is recorded. And at the end of the day, we're able to go through that sales data, update our forecasts of what we think our sales are going to be in the next few weeks, and decide what orders we need to replace. So computers are utilized very heavily in this building, not only to identify where in the building a particular piece of merchandise is, so that it, the order can be filled when it comes in, but also to monitor the performance of the building itself to make sure that not only are we moving the product out to the stores and to the customers, but we're doing so as efficiently as we can. Even the FBI is entering the world of electronic data. In this experimental office, paper may soon be obsolete. In the office of the future, the FBI agent will use the computer for administration, resource management, and an investigation heavily in the area of rapid access to information as an analysis tool for analyzing large bodies of information, collating, searching for patterns of illegality, correlating events, contacts, forecasting, predicting, and anticipating criminal activities such as arson for profit, such as terrorism incidents. Those types of activities were all, will all be supported directly in the field office by computer-based information systems. Technotech, a service for scientists and engineers, contains information on research and development programs worldwide. Both public and private corporate files are maintained. About three years ago, I was informed that I was going to have to have a surgical procedure done, and I was certain I wasn't going to let anybody put the knife to me unless I found out what was really going on. So I went into the library and I went browsing through the books and I learned all about the surgery. Then my doctor said that I should go to this particular technique called the Shouldice Clinic and have the Shouldice Technique. And I wanted to find out what that was and what kind of success rate they had, because after all, it was me that they were talking about. So I went to the Medline system and I asked that a search be done and every article in the last few years that had to do with the Shouldice Technique be printed out. There are literally probably hundreds of thousands of uh, medical articles uh, written every year. I never would have considered trying this at all if I couldn't have had a computer doing it for me. Medlars is a system providing current data on a variety of medical topics. Users can access information on poisons, chemicals, a variety of diseases, in addition to bibliographies of medical publications. Online information is here. Users of CompuServe have access to a variety of services. Local, national, international news, syndicated columns, even sports and weather information is available as it develops. 
Electronic mail assists customer communication, and a CB program provides for casual chatting. A forerunner of the information marketplace, the software exchange, allows subscribers to buy and sell computer programs electronically. When a purchase is made, the author is issued a check. One of the uses for these small computers is to analyze data that, uh, that's available commercially uh, on, on stock prices or, or economic data like the consumer price index or the gross national product. The, the data is available in data banks on large computer systems and it's accessible through your ordinary telephone. And the two largest occupations of the future will be connecting people through devices like this with information, providing access to the world's collected store of information. More important, providing access between people, because that is the real occupation of the future, to use the real information that is stored in people's minds. We have devised a system of electronic mail which allows us to exchange information among all of the RKO network affiliates, the headquarters, or even just between one and two individual stations or network people. The Army now, we find very exciting Army ways in which the new technology affects our business. The, the ability to communicate quickly across time zones and without the constant problems of making phone calls and missing people who are not in which is afforded to us by the intercom system, uh, we're able to speed the exchange of important business information. One of the facilities that we think will greatly enhance communication between professionals is called teleconferencing. We are experimenting with this right now, and we have picture phones in three different buildings where we can conduct meetings without having to travel between these buildings. Two summers ago, I spent a good deal of time working on a project that had to do with the office environment of the future. I was living on the edge of a bay. It didn't matter where I was to do my work. It didn't matter what time it was to do my work. The people I was working with were scattered over the United States, Canada. We even had one person in northern Scotland. Because he had access to a telephone and a device like this, he was able to work for us. Computer conferencing is like a telephone conference call. However, the parties need not be present at the same time. Messages are stored in computers for convenient retrieval. Many people can work together on a single problem, together on a network, but at times and places of their own choosing. We are shortly headed for the 21st century, the information century. To do that, we will have to have access to each other. That access will be provided through the computer. Experiments in computer conferencing have shown that new social relationships evolve. Ideas dominate, not individuals. The technology of computer conferencing, which can reach out to every individual in every home, will make it possible for very large numbers of people, thousands or tens of thousands, to have the ability to input information and opinions about important societal decisions. Uh, so that rather than having a small centralized staff in the central government that decides everything for you, people will have more of an ability to take charge of their own destinies. If one attempts to jump out of the present morass of concerns about knowledge and information technologies, computers and kindred things, and jump ahead, one sees essentially boundless opportunities to control, understand, manage, manipulate the world in ways that are literally unprecedented. The whole notion of this man-machine interface with information technologies now permits us to begin to seriously think about controlling the whole globe as a single entity in the way one might consider controlling the agriculture in a single Iowa county. And that capability just has to be one which is exciting. The economies of the nations of the industrialized West are based upon constant and unlimited growth. This need for growth has been the plague of the latter part of the 20th century. Communications will change our social and economic structures. Unlike hard goods, information is not destroyed through use. Imagine yourself walking into your bathroom every morning and using a bar of soap. After a certain amount of days, the bar of soap disappears. Imagine yourself writing a book and imagine hundreds and hundreds of people reading that book. Everyone who reads that book is enriched by that book. Information does not 
disappear. The bar of soap does disappear. That is the difference between the 19th century and the 21st century that we're heading into. Information. Information systems are constantly trying to merge. They're rare. Newspapers, books, the telegraph, the telephone, motion pictures, audio recording, radio, television, video, data processing, and data transmission. Today they're trying to come together to form a single universal information system wherein each individual will be able to communicate or receive anything from any other individual, anywhere, anytime. Such a system still lies in the future. The computer really is a new kind of tool. In the wheel and in the lever, man was really harnessing muscle. With today's computer chip technology, man is now able to capture and harness the very best in human knowledge. The knowledge of the best chess player, the best dentist, the best doctor, the best lawyer, best mathematician or chef, or whatever it might be. To take that knowledge and capture it, embody it in computer logic, and make it available to those who want that knowledge, regardless of where they may be on the surface of the globe. And that's a tremendously exciting thing for all kinds of people and all kinds of nations. The paperless age may have arrived. No one knows exactly what the ultimate electronic system will look like, but few people have any doubt that it will happen and that its effect will be enormous. When you answer the telephone or turn on your television, you are using some of the most complex technology ever devised. The ultimate system must have many attributes. It must, for example, be as easy to use as the telephone. One of the things that's happening with personal computers is the human interface is getting much better. We now have speech synthesis. We have speech recognition. We have graphics input and graphics output. We have a lot of things that people never thought of when computers were giant machines. We have biofeedback systems so that you can think a thought or twitch a muscle and control the computer just by doing that. But one of the things we see happening in computers is the human interface is improving dramatically. A lot more new, fascinating features are going in. But while they're going in, reliability is going up. Working on aids for the handicapped, researchers have developed a typewriter that speaks to the user. Typing and proofreading can be done without ever seeing a page. What's exciting for the future is that as that trend toward intimacy between man and machine continues, the machines will literally become part of us, and we in turn in other cases will become part of the machine. Enter correspondence state. Blank line. Yet another tool, the speech recognition typewriter, understands and transcribes the human voice. June. Future developments may mean the elimination of the typewriter Space. keyboard as we know it today. Enter program function state. I think that in recent years, we have certainly made the use of computers and information systems much easier, much friendlier for the user. I think that the trend for the future will be, in fact, making that interface, that the ease with which, the friendliness with which persons can, in fact, deal with machines is going to continue on, in fact, an accelerated pace. Everything today technically says that this need is going to continue, increase, and, in fact, be responded to by the technical community. Telecommunications and information processing technologies are making work portable. Have a nice day. And you have a nice day, too. The electronic cottage can be anywhere. An office, a hotel, the home, perhaps even the neighborhood library. The world is now literally at your doorstep. Within a few years, I think people will have the option of having a satellite ground station on their roof. So they can live in a log cabin in Montana and commute to work in Los Angeles every day electronically. The first effect, I think, of information on demand and education on demand is going to be to reaffirm the the family unit and i think that the new electronic networks are going to allow the family to educate itself uh, all over again it's going to be much more likely that one or both of the parents will be able to work at home or at least be able to do most of their work at home and that level of personal relationships is, is going to uh, expand uh, greatly and, and, in a sense, return to 
to what it was for most of our history. The walls surrounding the concepts of work, education, and play are beginning to crumble. Television, the center for home entertainment, will soon provide much more. Databases, instant news, games, shopping at home, person-to-person -person conferences, school, travel information. The possibilities are limited only by the imagination. If you write poetry, if you draw pictures, if you are a photographer, you can store all these so that any user can, can study them. If, if you want them private, of course, then only you or your friends that you give permission can get them out. But if you make them public, if you publish them, you get a royalty, and other people can not only read them and study them, but make marginal notes, which are private to them. I'm just talking about creating a big library you can use, see? And you use it from your home, and everything is in there. An ever-expanding body of stuff people have written and drawn and painted and photographed is in there. And you can use it all at a fixed cost. Storing, manipulating, processing raw data for problem solving or just entertainment. Time and location independence. The implications of our new uses of information will affect not only business, but society as a whole. The system does not discriminate. It simply deals in information. A child who is born today literally is more intelligent than I ever could be because they can use the shared information realm of the human species. And I would hope that we create technologies that enable everyone on the planet to utilize that, that shared information realm called the new sphere. I would also help that the security that is built into these systems will protect me from information that is collected about me, surveillance information. And I would make a very strong distinction there. That realm of ideas, which should be the legacy of all, and that information which is about people and which should be protected by security systems. The ability to store and retrieve information outside of the physical body is a mark of the human species. The essence of civilization is that each generation starts with the accumulated knowledge of all the generations which have gone before. The world has known highly sophisticated societies which have used this knowledge for both human enlightenment and human slavery. The Neosphere is an interesting concept uh, coined by Thierry de Chardin, uh, the Jesuit philosopher a number of years ago, which drew together a number of interesting observations. Namely, that knowledge is libraries, information books are, are pretty much the same all around the world, that we have information networks, that we have now collective memory systems, that knowledge just doesn't go away. It breathes, it grows, it increases, and it en envelops the globe, just like the stratosphere. And this concept of the noosphere, therefore, represents a truly fundamental jump in the evolutionary development of the Earth, but more importantly, in the evolutionary development of man. If we carry the present interest in information society, in developments in several areas such as biology, genetics, and so on forward, if we look at the universally shared knowledge base around the world, what we find is that we have created a situation which is unique. The viewers of this and every other television show, those who read books, those who listen to the radio or pick up the telephone, are wired into the neurosphere. And that's a kind of an exciting thing to play with because once it's universal, there's no way to kill it off. There's no way to stymie it or staunch it or contain it or bottle it up. The knowledge is available everywhere and in all places for all men and women everywhere. And that becomes an entirely new situation that the world has never encountered before.